Can you understand, John, why tonight lots of your members, you know, the, the folk who helped get you elected, feel very disillusioned about the fact that they weren't given a vote? Well, yes, I can. And some of my members have already been in touch to express that. But what we need is to have a look who commands the support of the Parliamentary Party. Um, Rishi Sunak now does that. And I think that to have a vote of the party um, would have prolonged it. And potentially what we're, but, but the worst thing that could have happened is actually what happened with Liz Truss, which was that um, one candidate won a majority of MPs and then the membership rejected that person and chose a different person. And in a sense, that was at the that was the start of a problem that Liz Truss didn't have a majority of MPs supporting her. Um, and as a result, the party remained very divided. I think the fact that Rishi Sunak can command the overwhelming majority, actually, of MPs support now um, is the best chance we have of uniting the party and moving forward. Now, look, obviously, you have yep. been a Boris loyalist. Uh, you're also hmm. very close to his wife, uh, Carrie. Uh, lots of people like me were so disappointed that he decided not to run. I'm convinced he would have won with the membership in an overwhelming manner. Uh, so what went on this weekend, John? Why, why did he uh, decide not to put his name forward, given he did have, and it's verified by the 1922 committee, he did have the 100 nominations required? He did. Um, he had 102, so we're told. Uh, I'm absolutely certain he passed the threshold, and therefore he was qualified to run as a candidate in that election. But 102 was only just over the mark. And I go back to the beginning of my political career. I worked for Margaret Thatcher. I was with her uh, when she was challenged for the leadership by Michael Heseltine. She got a majority of MPs supporting her, but she didn't quite reach the threshold which was then in place. Um, and she decided not to contest in the second round. And I remember saying to her a few weeks later, actually, if you'd gone ahead and fought in the second round, I believe you could still have won. And she looked at me and said, it wouldn't have mattered because it would have divided the party so badly um, that it would have been impossible really to move forward. And I think that was the judgment that Boris made. He had the support of 102, which got him over that threshold, but it meant that two thirds of the party hadn't supported him. And I think even if the membership had decided to elect him, it would have meant a continuation of the division that unfortunately has um, been the big problem for the party for some time. Whereas Rishi Sunak was able to command a substantial majority of MPs. And I think there is a willingness on the whole of the parliamentary party to support him, which would not have been there to my sadness uh, if Boris Johnson had become leader again. Is this the end of Boris Johnson's frontline political career? I don't think you can ever say um, it's the end of a career. I mean, I served in David Cameron's cabinet. Uh, Theresa May sacked me because we didn't agree about certain things. And I thought, I know, that was that. And then I came back as a minister again. So politics is unpredictable and you can never tell what's going to happen next. So and Boris is a person of huge talent. So I would never write off Boris Johnson. So there could um, still be a Churchillian comeback. Well, who knows? I mean, I, I would like, obviously, the Conservative Party to go on to win the next election. I hope that Rishi Sunak succeeds as Prime Minister. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't ever say that Boris is John you're, you're never going to hear from Boris Johnson again. I think that is unlikely. No, indeed, I agree. Uh, former Conservative Cabinet Minister Sir John Whittingdale, thank you so much.